All right, guys, it's time to talk about another uh, one of those uh, baseball simulation controversies, the kind that um, only the true geeky and uh, the people who love messing around with numbers end up uh, running into. Uh, we're not talking today about something about like the 50-50 split system in Strab. We're not going to talk about who the actual inventor of the app game was. We're not going to talk about any of those uh, types of controversies that have come and gone over the years. Now, what we're talking about here today is uh, something that affects everybody who has uh, replayed a certain season. And it's something that will say a lot about the overall philosophy you have behind these games. What we're talking about is Roger Maris in 1961. Now, if you haven't tried it, if you haven't played with it, and if you haven't looked at it, you're going to look and say, well, what's the big deal about Maris in 61? Let's go take a look. We're going to open up here. Here is baseball reference. And here we go. Here's a beautiful Roger Maris. We have uh, two photos to choose from. And man, he got gray hair really fast, didn't he? So the problem that we see here is this. Maris had a standout year in 1961. He had 61 home runs. We know that. He had 60 for the Yankees and uh, I'm sorry, 39 for the Yankees in 1960. See, if he had 60, this wouldn't be a problem. 33 and 62. And so the question is, what in the world happened in 61, right? His offensive output was um, really off the charts. Interesting thing to say is that when we look at OPS+, Plus, it wasn't that different from 1960 when he was an all-star and he was the MVP. But uh, 61 with those uh, 61 home runs really was an outlier and really was an incredible season. Now, if you don't know the story, you should go watch that old Billy Crystal movie and learn all about uh, how hard it was for him, especially at the end of the season. Most people... People, including people who remember the season, people who don't remember the season but who uh, know a lot about it, and really geeky baseball fans like me, will look at 1961 and say this is a great season to replay. Of course we want to play with 61. It looks fascinating. Absolutely. We want to get in on that because we want to give this a try. Especially since what we really want to do is we want to have the experience of Roger Maris really struggling to hit 61 home runs. That's what happened in real life. It was not easy for him. It didn't come naturally. He didn't just go up and, you know, smack home runs left and right. Um, it was difficult, especially uh, in the final stretch of the season. However... If you play any game, I don't care what game it is, and you use only his 1961 stats as a baseline, he's going to have just as much of a chance of hitting like 75 home runs as he will of, of uh, coming up short of 61. And that's where people have the problem. That's where people get really concerned about uh, about this sort of thing. And that's where a lot of people have had a lot of discussions on the subject. There's something about home runs that gets people upset. And I've seen it myself in my own replay. If you look back on the blog, uh, you'll see that I, there have been times where I've talked about players who had no home runs in real life who um, end up hitting one or two or three in Diamond Mine Baseball. And I comment on it because you notice it. You see, well, this guy never had a home run in real life. In at least one case, the guy never had a home run in any professional level. And you say, well, geez, I mean, how is he able to do that now uh, good fans of the game will talk about someone like rick camp but um we're not going to talk about that problem today uh the problem that we have is that home runs are something that are very noticeable and when things seem off like as in roger maris hits uh 61 home runs uh like by the second week of september in your replay that's when you're going to start thinking hey there's something weird going on maybe there's a problem with this game maybe it's something i don't like and so there are two general schools of thought that have emerged on this one is this very traditional view that says you know we need to be um, true to our roots and we want to make sure that what we have in the game is exactly the way that things were played in real life in other words who am i to uh, completely rewrite the record books and to say maris didn't deserve hitting 61 home runs in 1961 because he definitely did and i would remind you that maris didn't walk up there with a three six-sided die and a 20-sided die and roll the dice when he was standing at the plate and look at his stratomatic card right it doesn't work like that in real life we talk a lot about rng in the games but real life rng might not actually be a thing it might be some other more complicated things happening right at the same time when you think about games with development engines, it's pretty obvious what happened here because you can get guys who are hot for a season and then who cool off and go back down to their natural ability. That's the reason why this feels strange. It feels strange for Maris in 61 to potentially have like the greatest offensive season in history if you're playing with any simulator when you know in real life that he barely hit 61 home runs and it was difficult for him to do so. And so as a result... 
when we look around, we see a lot of different things happen with different games. There are some games like uh, certain forms of, I don't know, Stratomatics uh, computer game where uh, Maris will be somewhat nerfed and the game will try to prevent him from hitting too many home runs. I don't know this for a fact, but I understand that there are other computer games that do something similar that will try to hold back some of those so-called extreme or outlier performances based upon stuff that you as the user can't see. A lot of us, and I include myself, in this don't like anything that the game is doing that is sort of against the game engine to uh, correct uh, things for uh, the sake of accuracy. I would much rather have something that is open and transparent. Um, in a game like OTP, you can make it up as you want. You can base his ratings off of a single season, three years or five years, and there are different things you can do to smooth things out or give a little bit more weight to a single year, which is nice, but if you're playing with a game with like cards and dice, I mean, you're not going to create brand new cards for every single thing based upon whatever random thing you want to create. So, I mean, it's a really, really interesting type of subject and it's a very touchy subject for a lot of people. But really in the end, I do think it says a lot about your philosophy towards the game. I would say that people who are very, very loyal to the concept of a replay and who think that the stats themselves are almost holy, Sarcosanct, are going to probably say, you know, we can't touch the stats. The card is based on the season stats. Whereas people, I think, who might have a little bit more pragmatic approach and say, well, we care more about his ability than his stats would probably say, yeah, you know, we shouldn't worry too much about the stat. Let's look at his ability over a couple of seasons, try to smooth it out a little bit to make a player that makes a little bit more sense. This is something I've had my, uh, I've been thinking about a lot, especially considering how the uh, uh, 86 Mets are playing in my 62 uh, time travel uh, replay. I'm thinking, you know, it's rough to see the team not play well, but it could happen and it could very well be the case that, you know, the team actually in 86 may have played a little bit over their heads a la Roger Maris. And this is where you can see the philosophy and the basic you know, thought and theory behind this come into play. Love to know what your thoughts are. Let me know down below. Talk to you later. Bye.